Hey guys, Steve Olin the Soul Fan, out at the workbench again today. I got this idea for a project a week or so ago and I've been working a little bit at a time and trying to make some progress today but I decided I wanted to make a forge so I could forge some steel and make a knife or something like that just because I like messing with stuff and I thought it would be an interesting project so I'm going to show you where we are so far. I took a couple snapshots along the way that you probably saw at the beginning of this video, but this is going to be the body of my forge, and basically it's a old propane tank that I cut out, and I'm going to insulate this end of the forge with some refractory material. I'm trying to make this forge completely out of materials I had lying around the house, so I, uh, I have some some cat litter that I'm going to use the clay from the cat litter and a concrete mix that I have. I might put a little bit of not concrete but cement um, just to act as an additional bonding agent and then I'm going to put some perlite from the garden into the mix to lighten it up a bit plus it adds some insulating value the material so instead of going out to buy some refractory I'm going to try to make something and see how it works out so the idea basically is to fill the bottom here somewhat concave have a air inlet from the back underneath with a little bit of a grill in it um, just to keep some of the coals and stuff from dropping through obviously some stuff will drop through but ash or whatnot um, and then to try to insulate this part as well so that the forging will happen back here in the shadow where my hand is um, and it'll contain the heat pretty well um, and then the front section here will still be hot but it'll be a little bit cooler to deal with so if I have tongs resting on the front here um, as I'm working it won't be terrible heat right at that point so just remember if you're working on any kind of project PPE personal protective equipment. So here's my goggles. I use these rubber goggles. They're cheap, but I use this because it fits over my glasses and I can still see what I'm doing while I'm working. They have lots of different glasses and stuff that look pretty cool, but if you need your eyeglasses to see, those don't really fit over them very well. So this was, like I said, an old propane tank. So obviously if you're going to cut into a flammable gas tank, you got to make sure that it's completely evacuated from gas and stuff before you ever do that. So usually on the end of here, on that valve that you would connect your barbecue pit or whatever, um, you can open that wide up and let some gas out, but then there's also a little screw on the side where you can bleed it out even further. Um, and then I took the valve off and let it sit for a, a, a while, and I blew fresh air into it from my compressor for a while and then I just let it sit for a couple days before I actually cut into it. I had to get my cuts started with a um, angle grinder. Uh, not this wheel, I had a, cut, a metal cut, cutting wheel that I used to get into it but then I found that my reciprocating saw actually cut it a lot quicker and easier. And then after I got it off, I went around and took the grinder to these edges to try to round them off and make sure there were no sharp burrs on there. Um, and actually finished it up with a hand file because I was able to get it a little more like I wanted it using the file. Because the uh, vibration of the grinder still leaves a little bit of a rough edge sometimes. So that's the beginning of it. Eventually I'll probably try to do something with the outside, maybe clean up this old paint on there and paint it with some high heat black paint or something. But for now, there's the body of the forge. I'm going to work on that uh, refractory material and update you on that as we go. This is going to be my uh, air supply tube that's going to go in the bottom through the back here. I'll just mark a hole where I want to cut that and insert this along the bottom with some holes drilled through it 
to uh, supply some air kind of in an elongated section of the center of the forge. This is an old piece of tubing from a swimming pool frame. It was coated with some kind of thick white paint and you never know what's in paint so I just tried to knock the paint off. Uh, if I do this right it shouldn't actually get that hot but it's going to have some pretty hot coals uh, an inch or so above it so you never know what fumes you can get from from paint so I just knock as much of the paint off of it as I could and then on this end I'll be able to uh, attach my uh, the plan for right now is to attach my shop vac to blow air into it um, you could use a hair dryer or eventually I'll probably get a small uh, blower motor to attach the problem with the shop vac that I'm gonna have is it's not really adjustable or any variable speed it's just gonna blow whatever it blows and I'll have to try to figure out a way maybe to regulate that a little bit but uh, that's the plan so I'm gonna try to get this cut to insert this tube and uh, then get back to the refractory action mixture with that very soupy clay mix that I had mixed with the perlite and uh, get that mixed up a little bit more you can see the perlite still down in there a little bit get that mixed up thoroughly and then uh, get a little bit of this thin set mortar mixed in with it and a little more water maybe and get it to the right consistency and then we're going to try to line the bottom of this thing. So we're still working on our forge project. We got some old 2x4s laying around. We're gonna make a little bit of a stand for that forge that we're creating. Even I'm dusting this off. <laughs> yeah, I actually helped him because I don't want him to do too much work and he needs to relax. <laughs> She's so sweet. So we just made this out of some scraps we had laying around. So it's a three foot tall stand for the forge we made and these little runners right here are gonna make sure that the uh, round tank doesn't roll from side to side and I may even put a strap over it. Even so there it is our forge on the stand. Even I have screws. It's uh, pretty solid. We got one we got one two three Yay! We're just waiting for this so uh, refractory you, stuff to cure that I've made. Um, I don't know how it's going to hold up. The stuff that remained in the bucket was kind of brittle, so I'm not sure if this is going to dry as solid as I want it to. But we're going to try it out and see what happens. Yep. So, that's an old propane tank. Please. Is where our air will go in. Yes. Heat that fire up. Mm-hmm. And we'll see what we can do. Yep. Even we're waiting for this to dry. So 
So here's the forge, first fire. I'm burning some wood in it today. I'm gonna go get some coal. I'm gonna try that uh, coal from Tractor Supply, see how it works. I, my plan was to uh, use my shop vac as a blower motor for now until I get a small blower motor for the forge and it's just way too strong. Um, so, and I don't really have a way to regulate that. So I'm gonna try and demonstrate the forge with the blower motor, but I'm gonna have to kind of stand back away from it. So I have to get one of the kids to hold the camera for me. Wait. So I'm doing some additional work on my stand. I kept calling it a stand, the little table I made for my forge earlier in the video. It's uh, now the following day after I built that and I'm realizing that it's time to cut the grass and I'm going to have to move this out of the way. To get my zero turn out so I decided to turn my stand into a cart <laughs> make it a little bit easier to move around so I had some uh, some wheels on an old cutting deck that's not being used anymore so I pulled them off of there and mounted them on the back side of the cart and then I split a little block of two by four and uh, made some handles the front side of the cart so now I can just uh, tilt it up a little bit and roll it out of the way. Mm -hmm. 